I think I am, but I'm not sure it is. Words. Words can describe action, attitude, character, personality. Words. Our way to convey our thoughts to one another. Words. Innovative. Trustworthy. Intelligent. Forward-looking. Philanthropic, convener, motivator, visionary, creative, exceptional. Just a few words that describe Mort Mandel, one of a kind. Mort was president of this organization from 1970 to 74, uh, 50 years ago. And of course, it's all waiting for that to become president. His commitment to this organization was really special. I can't tell you how many times he would tell me, I need to go to It's something that I'm going to continue to be involved in because they make it available for all of us to change Jewish community life for the better. Mort was action-oriented, to say the very least. He was one of the very few philanthropists who understood how important staff is to an organization. Lay people come and go, or of course, maybe, usually. That quality of professional staff are the backbone of the organization, and he invested in that because he believed that's what made a great organization. Or had a very special talent. A sixth sense of perfect timing. An understanding of what change was coming and a creative idea of how to meet that challenge. The projects he envisioned were for the long term. He not only stayed the course with his time and treasure, but he did an evaluation of the outcomes for continued success. <coughs> there was only one level of achievement for more, and that was the top, first place. Second was not even an option in any case. Mort supported so many worthy organizations in the Jewish community and the general community worldwide. But there was a very special place in his heart for JWB slash JCCA. We were blessed to be able to call him one of our. We read yesterday in uh, Parashat Bayechi, which is the last Parashat portion in the book of Genesis, uh, of Jacob's dying. Before he dies, he calls his son Joseph, and he makes Joseph swear to him to do a chesed ve'emet, and not to bury him in Egypt, but to bring him up to Canaan. That phrase, chesed ve'emet, the true kindness, ever since then has been applied to any of the mitzvot or anything that we do for a person who has died. It is a true kindness because there's no expectation that there's any tip for tabs or that there's anything that we will get in return. Hold on to that concept, chesed ve'emet, because it's going to be important for us. In Parashat Vayechi, it then goes on to describe how Jacob dies, and it uses the word um, it uses the word, um, like the word, vayigva, uh, which means to expire. What that means is that his body <coughs> stops functioning. But in classic rabbinic thought, the soul is eternal. And what happens when the body ceases functioning is that the soul becomes very disoriented because it no longer has a home. And it hovers over the body for about 12 months. 
until it ascends and is purified to complete uh, its journey and return uh, to be close to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. To help, uh, according to rabbinic thought, the souls of a wicked person require 12 months to go through that process before they can ascend. And that's why Jewish law says when a parent dies, we say Kaddish only for 11 months. Nobody should think that they need it all 12 months. But this is also the source of the tradition and the custom of Jewish practice of dedicating mitzvot, of dedicating uh, uh, the performance of commandments, and in particular the dedicating of learning to aliyat ha to help the soul ascend. So it is fitting then uh, for us to dedicate some learning at this time both to Mort and Barbara's memory. We do it really for three reasons. One, it is a mark of honor and respect. Second, as we learned uh, just now, it is an act, uh, an act of chesed shel emet, an act of true kindness. But perhaps more important, uh, it's an act of love, because Mort uh, has, me, meant so much and his memory continues to mean. So, Abraham Joshua Heschel said, what we need is not more textbooks, but text people. I think Mort was a classic example of a text person, someone who integrates themselves, their content, their passion, and their drive into their work. People who constantly <coughs> reflect in order to perfect their craft. And people who are exemplars uh, and worth examining just as we might examine a text. Uh, Anne spoke earlier about the power of words. I can think of no better text represented more than we should look at than his own words. So on each table, you should find a handout. It looks like this. It's probably face down. I have your hands here. Yes. Please pass them out. Let me explain what we're going to do. It looks like this. I know I put them on each table. There should be another. It is laid out, you should understand, in the form of the classic Jewish commentary, the great commentaries. And in that format, the most important words go in the middle. So the words in the red in the middle, those are quotes of Morse. And I chose them because, as Anne reminded us, they spoke of something very, very important to Morse, which was the person assigned to the job. But in reading them, I was reminded that in a few weeks, we will read, and this you'll find on the left side in Exodus, a similar situation where Moses' father-in-law gives him some advice about how to choose the right person. And on the other side, you'll see a selection from Deuteronomy. That's 38, layers, 38 years later, when Moses is retelling the story to the Israelites of how Yitro advised him how to find the right person and what to look for. You're going to do some work now on each table. You're going to study Mort's words and you're going to ask them to just talk about how they connect <coughs> to the words from the Torah that surround them. So I'll start by simply reminding you we have a few questions to guide your study. They'll be up on the board. First of all, what do you think of Mort's list of qualities? Would you add or replace anything? Read the selection from Exodus 18. How does Yitro's list match Mort's? Uh, what do those qualities mean to you and how do they compare? Read that section from De Deuteronomy 1. What is different? That's a big clue. The list that Moses remembers is not the list that he was given. And what does it mean when Moses selects leaders with only two of those three qualities? So to kick it off at the top of the page, there's the blessing for study. I invite you to join me. No one is obligated. Baruch atah Adonai, Elohim Barak Alam, Asher Kishan Ritzvotah, Zimah, Asosu, Yudah.
great to allow. And perhaps to start, Morton had a particular understanding of reading in committees. To read meant to read out loud. So I'll read the quote from Morton, and then every big table can go to work. It's not how much you do or how much you delegate. It's what you delegate and to what extent. What do I look for? Five key things in this order. Intellectual firepower, values, passion, work ethic, and experience. Go and learn. Thank <laughs> you. 
take the rest of the time of the board meeting. Um, we're not going to do that. I would like to ask, we're not going to go in here from each table, but I would like to ask, is there somebody who has an insight that came up at the table that would like to share it? Maybe we can just hear a couple of things that came up in your conversation. Any insights, a question, a challenge, something that struck you? Well, I think in Exodus, if you look at how it's written, it's a top-down approach. In other words, nobody really has experience because they've just come out of Egypt, so nobody has experience in leadership because they didn't need it or weren't allowed it, and therefore the chiefs are having to be appointed by Moses. If you look at Deuteronomy, it's actually a bottom-up approach to the fact that he says, pick from your own tribes men who are wise and have experience because now they're eight leaders. They've actually had to develop that experience. 
And so the people that are being selected already have the respect of those who they will lead, as opposed to the other way where they may or may not, because they don't have that, uh, that leadership built up. Thank you. Yeah. An important factor in leadership is delegation. And many times, as we see nowadays, people forget that part and want to do everything themselves. Thank you. So I'll take the privilege. It was my COVID, my great honor and fortune to be able to have worked with Mort and to have learned a lot from him. And I think it is fitting to close with one uh, last quotation, or one final quotation right now. Mort said, I strongly believe in the ability of a single extraordinary person to change the world. I think that was a very deep-seated belief of Mort's, and I think it's something that uh, he would say he would offer as a challenge to each one of you on the board, JCC Association, and if you do have the ability, what are you going to do to change the world? Wasn't, Mort wasn't interested in small things, he was interested in big things. And his question always was, what are you going to do? to change the world. Uh, so in, in Mort and Barbara's memory, both, uh, we shall not see their like anytime soon. Extraordinary people. Yehi Zichram Barbara. May their memories be for us. Uh, uh, I'd like to call Tom. Um, it would be easier for everybody, for everybody to hear. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> As we were all talking uh, in our in our individual groups, uh, David came up to me and he leaned over me and said, "This is probably unfair. You have insider knowledge." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I complimented him in return, saying that he was dead on about my father and and um, having everybody read these things aloud. Because if you ever saw <coughs> uh, with my dad, you know that he made you read the minutes aloud. He made you read every report aloud just to make sure that everybody understood. And um, he was very adamant about that. Uh, I can remember uh, a, a gentleman who was on our foundation board for a period of time. And he, uh, he chaired one of the committees. And his management style was, you come in here already having read the minutes. You know, if you don't, haven't already read the minutes and understood them, you don't belong on, on my committee. And uh, he and my dad locked horns over that. And, uh, and he wound up not being the chair of the committee. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but uh, you know, the uh, quote that's on the, uh, on the screen, or on, on the paper, uh, really spoke to what my dad was saying was, it's really all about who you hire, <coughs> who you put on your projects, because uh, if you want to be successful, you're going to get successful by putting the very best people possible uh, in place, and uh, that's how you're going to accomplish your goals. <coughs> um, the first year that I came to one of these biennials, and I can't remember what year it was, but I think it was in Montreal. And uh, my dad was presented the Frank Wilde Award. And um, we are going back to our, uh, our rooms. We're going up in the elevator. And he uh, starts by saying, well, you know I knew Frank Wilde. And uh, he, was, uh, he was president of this uh, organization around the time that my dad started um, uh, volunteering for the JCC in our community. Are you not hearing me very well? Okay. I can move closer to the microphone. Too. And um, JCC was really the first volunteer work that he did. And it was one of the very last things that he, uh, he continued to do until he really couldn't travel very well anymore. And that was really only about two years ago, which is pretty amazing. You know, I think as recently as two years, he was sitting in this room talking to this group, and uh, that really says a lot about who he was and, um, and his devotion to this organization 
and, uh, and the work of uh, all of the individual JCCs. Um, his name is on two JCCs. <coughs> um, his uh, influence is on two more. And um, that it has transcended into a second generation of JCC volunteers, I think speaks to what he thought of this organization and how important he thought this work was, and how, how incredibly proud he was of all the people here and the thousands of people that have come before us who are doing this work. And um, you know, for him, you know, the next generation of, of, uh, of Jewish kids and Jewish families is the one most important thing that he wanted to guarantee. And uh, if he uh, gave me anything else, it was that he wants that next generation after us to have a similar, um, a similar point of view. So uh, that's the work in front of us. And I hope that uh, everybody here um, is as committed as he was and as I am to see that it gets done in the best way possible. And of course, uh, the kinds of people that are described in the, uh, in the um, Exodus piece. Thanks, guys.